internet in Germany is a hot topic. But we're not about complaining in this channel, we're more about giving out the facts and helping you make an informed decision with the information that is out there and the availability of services that you can get. If you want to understand how to choose the best internet provider for you, then stay tuned. Hey, my name is Jen and I'm from Guatemala. And my name is Yvonne and I'm German. And together we're from SimpleGermany.com where we help expats settle into life in Germany more smoothly. <laughs> so let's start with the very first thing. If you're watching this video now, which is 2022, you are in luck because <laughs> starting in December 2021, actually some um, a new law came into place specifically for the telecommunication industry. Just to give a little bit of context, until December 2021, the telecommunication industry was very intransparent bureaucratic and a bit scammy, if we can use that word. Well, I would say they can still be scammy now. It's yeah. just that you have more consumer rights. Yes, exactly. So we will first touch base on what are the new consumer rights that you should be aware of, because these are your rights. So speaking of internet and telecommunication in general, contracts that are like last 24 months are very, very popular, whether it is for home internet, topic of this video, or SIM cards and mobile contracts, topic of another video. <laughs> and Recently, there has been this amazing change that after the 24 month period, you can change or cancel your contract with only one month notice. And there is no longer the often so frowned upon um, automatic continuous extra year that you need to stick in a contract. So that is no longer happening. So you after 24 months gain your freedom. Yes, that is amazing. And also back in the day, you needed to give a three month actually notification yeah. um, contract. So that's super cool. So now if your contract is out to renewed because you want it to be on to renewed, then the benefit is that every month you can actually cancel it, exactly. which before was not the case. That is super cool. Another benefit is that your telecommunication provider needs to inform you once a year whether there is a better or or cheaper tariff that compares to yours that you currently have. Mm. So you no longer can be trapped in an old tariff paying more for the same value that is already provided for a cheaper price. So that is no longer happening. That is also super cool. Another thing is that if for some reason you have an outage of internet for at least two days, you can actually talk to your telecommunication company and they you have the right to receive compensation for that loss of internet, which was not the case before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, just as a quick summary of this new law, there is now in writing lawfully that every household in Germany has the right for fast internet. Yay! Yay! But, well, but, <laughs> <laughs> yay, however, there is this small detail that the new law lacked to define, which is kind of like the crucial thing of it all, because fast internet is just fast internet, and they didn't put a number on oh. it. They didn't put a number on how fast it needs to be, how fast you have a right for it to be. So currently, you know, you can still have the slow internet in the village, in the countryside, and that can be defined fast because there is no number to it. Rumors have it that the number that they are discussing and will add to this new law later in time might be around 16 megabytes per second in download. Hmm. So, so that is kind of like maybe the average you need to have for proper internet usage. Yes. And watching movies in standard definition. Yes, that is true. Although there is no number, we believe it's at least a step in the right direction to guarantee uh, at least a basic amount of speed for everyone in the future in the future because so far the problem one of the problems that happens with internet in germany is that your contract says you have a certain amount of speed but the lines and the cables and the infrastructure of the building where you live don't support such speed so you tend to have less in, less speed than you're actually paying for but that is why these consumer laws are now kicking into place to bridge that gap of like i'm paying for this much i should be getting at least this much exactly so that's a benefit so yay. So now what kind of like uh, internet technology is available in Germany? In Germany, there is two um, most widespread uh, ways of getting internet to your home. Um, and that is DSL and cable. <laughs> so let's have a closer look at what both technologies mean because there is a difference and there is also a difference in availability, which at the end of the day is the defining factor. Yes. DSL brings internet to your home via the old copper telephone lines, hence the lack of speed in Germany. However, DSL, because it's via the phone lines, means it's really widely available in also the rural areas because every house usually has a phone line. Exactly. So that is the pro, but at the same time also the con, hmm. meaning that DSL is the most available way to getting internet. 
And I would say the most popular way still of I agree. Uh, German households to get internet. Yes, definitely. We have DSL. We have DSL. <laughs> However, we could have cable, we're just too lazy to change. Yeah. Because changing is usually a hassle. Also, yes, that's yes. a problem for another video. <laughs> if you get your internet through cable, on the other hand, that means you get it through the cable lines of your TV station or your TV mm. access in your house. So it's a different kind of line and it is usually more stable and a little bit faster. However, it is not as widely spread because not every household actually has a TV cable because there are some houses also in Germany that have satellite TV that mm. exists, right? So that is the other alternative. A third option, which is you know, revolutionary for Germany, but not as widely available as either of the other two would be fiberglass. Oof, but that alone, I think it's a hot topic of itself because uh, during our research, I mean, fiberglass is a very complicated thing to understand the status quo because some companies like Vodafone and Telecom, it seems that they're investing heavily and in it's available, creating, definitely right, in, in creating fiberglass access. It's available in very certain areas. And I even read once that if you have a house and if there's no fiberglass connection there and you want fiberglass, you actually need to kind of like invest from your own pocket to start the building of the fiberglass. You haven't just read that. It's part of this new law ah. that the landlord can have you as a tenant pay partially for getting fiberglass to the house. Ah, you see? The law actually now gives the landlord the right to pass the cost on to you. Whoa. But to like a maximum of, ooh, don't, I'm not sure, but like maybe like 40 euros a year. It's not external. Ah, it's, it's totally okay. 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 It's totally okay. And actually recently we had the construction site in front of our house and we asked because we were curious because they were putting a cable down in the ground and it was a fiberglass cable. <gasps> cool. So they are building, they are extending the network, but of course they're starting with the cities yeah. and also of course with, with like company buildings, right? Mm. But it is happening and um, Vodafone and Telecom are the two that are um, building and, and this and, infrastructure yeah, exactly yeah okay so based on all the let's say challenges that exist in germany for getting internet how do i know how much internet i should get from my home it pretty much depends on your usage um, and that is really easily defined on are you an average internet user who checks your emails whether you um, watch a few youtube videos you oh. stream netflix um, and you browse the internet as a regular person as a one a single single person yeah. then 16 megabytes download per second are totally okay and totally fine as long as you don't touch that hd or 4k stuff <laughs> Because then obviously then you would see lagging and it's not as fast as well. Okay, what if I'm a, I'm a bit more of a more than that or I have more people in my house? So if you live in a shared flat or if you're a couple of family and you like the 4K or HD stuff, yeah. then you should definitely get more than 16 um, megabytes per second. And depending on how many people use it, you should maybe even up for like 250 megabyte seconds, megabit per second download. Yes, currently in our home, we actually have 50. Yes, we have 50, which sometimes, especially with uh, uploading the YouTube videos, <laughs> could be faster. Yes. But it, it's manageable. It is manageable for sure. Now, if you're like a super hardcore internet user, meaning you're full on to the online games, uh, 4K, HD streaming, and God knows what else you do with internet that you need so much, <laughs> then you should consider getting the 1000 megabits per second download. But there's a big caveat to this. This is high speed internet. And as we mentioned before, it usually depends on having a fiberglass connection, which is not available everywhere, which leads to the third point of this video is how do I even get internet at my home? And which are the major providers? And which are the major yeah. providers? So there's three major nationwide providers of home internet. And that is Deutsche Telekom, mm -hmm. Vodafone and One and One. Uh, eins und eins, <laughs> one and one. Um, there is also O2, they come in in fourth place, just because we mentioned them also in, in the uh, SIM card video, but those are the main players nationwide. Now, talking about home internet, there are actually quite a few uh, regional and local providers mm -hmm. that wouldn't pop up in the nationwide um, arena, which is why we're not mentioning them. If you're wondering which internet provider to get for you, it really highly depends on the availability. Sometimes you will have access to all of them, sometimes maybe to just one. <laughs> so the best way to do it is each of the nationwide internet providers, they have an availability check page where you can enter your zip code and then they're able to tell you whether they provide services there or not. And the ultimate best way of checking which internet provider might fit your needs is to go to a page 
like Check24, which we leave the link in the description below. And this is a comparison site where you're able to compare the multiple internet providers and choose the best option for you. Exactly, yeah. And one more thing needs to be said about home internet because we actually also had that question. Here we talk a lot about speeds of internet, but in Germany, generally speaking, home internet is not capped or anything mm. by an amount of gigabyte data that you have available. So usually speaking, home internet is always unlimited and the only deciding factor for the price you pay is the speed. Yes, that is a very good point. Yeah, it's not capped by any means. When scouting for the best internet provider for your home, you will probably come across the question whether you have already an internet or, or Wi-Fi router at home or not. Most likely, I would say you don't have one, and I'm not even sure if the one from your home, if you would bring it, would work here. So you would pro most likely check the box you need one. The bigger providers usually provide these routers for free nowadays, because back in the day, you actually need to pay like a one-time fee or mm. actually like a rental like per month fee for such a router. So I would try to stay away from that and really get the router as a package of the internet deal that you make. Yes, good tip. If you like this kind of content and it's actually helpful to you, then please give it a like. And also, if you haven't subscribed yet and you have seen us before, then please click subscribe and help this channel out to grow. And if you would like to go the extra mile, then you can support us with a contribution in the shape of a virtual coffee on simplegermany.com slash coffee. Continuing with the program. <laughs> One more thing to keep in mind, and this is why we also mentioned it in all of our guides on steps to do take after you arrive in Germany, is to take care of that home internet as soon as possible because it may take up to six weeks. Yes, what? you have heard that right. It may take up to six weeks for you to actually get internet in your home. And the simple reason is that it depends on which provider you choose, whether the lines and the connectivity is similar to the provider, the person who lived in the flat beforehand had. Mm. If it's the same line and the same provider, you can have it within the same day. Yeah. If it, however, is a different provider and a different line, you Ooh. might actually need even a technician to come to install some things, change some things up, and they don't come the next day. And that takes time. So, you know, you don't know what technology has been used before. Choose the one you like, just do it fast because it might take long. Yeah, so the tip there is that while you're waiting, obviously you can use the hotspot from your mobile phone if your mobile phone supports it to have some Wi-Fi at home at least. Just to give you an example, when I moved here with Yvonne, she used to have one and one. Eins und eins is in German. In English it sounds so weird to say one and one. <laughs> and I have a Vodafone mobile contract. And because I have Vodafone, I had realized that if I would get home internet with Vodafone, I would actually get a thing called Gigacombi, which is that I save 10 euros a month by paying my mobile phone contra contract and I get 10 gigabytes extra on my phone. So this was a reason to say like, hey, let's please change internet to Vodafone. Ivan's like, no, please, let's not do that. I'm like, but we're going to save money and get more gigabytes. She's like, no. <laughs> so I was able to convince her <laughs> after some, you know, conversations. And I understand what she means because we had one-on-one -on -one that was using some lines from another telecom. telecom. So now Vodafone had to come and change that configuration. And that took weeks. So it took weeks for the technician to come. The first technician didn't do a good job. So we were without internet for some time until again, another con technician came and actually fixed everything. So actually changing internet providers took, I would say a month more or less to have a stable connection. So that's why we're so scared of changing again. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> but anyways, the, the moral of the story is get your internet connection as fast as you can. Look into getting boosters or seeing if you have a mobile phone contract. Maybe if you have the same internet provider at home, you can save money also. And the third one is if you want to change internet providers, just take into consideration it will take some time. It might take some time. It might take some time. <laughs> Now that you sorted your home internet out, you might be wondering about mobile internet if you haven't solved that problem yet. So if you're wondering about the mobile internet, you can check our video that's coming up next about best SIM cards in Germany. Until next time. Tschüss.